and welcome to our Universal Backlot Tour here on this lovely Minecraft day. My name is Charlie and I will be your tour guide. I hope you've all been enjoying the incredible activities and food that we have on offer today. We are going behind the scenes to see just how we bring movies to life. And as a special treat, we'll even get to see some of our favorite animated characters. First stop, San Francisco. Soundstage 50 is currently our San Francisco BART station set. Uh, nothing to worry about, just a minor tremor. Earthquakes are pretty common here in San Francisco. After all that excitement, we'll go somewhere a little more tranquil. How does a trip to Amity Island sound? The Jaws Lake set is the perfect place to enjoy a sunny day, if you ask me. Although, I'm no expert, but is that a shark in the water? We'll just stay behind this tiny flammable rock. What could go wrong? See? Everything is totally fine. Let me introduce you to Bruce. Bruce is our mechanical shark and one of the hardest working actors here at Universal Studios. Bruce, of course, being the mechanical shark used in Jaws. Animated movies are also an important part of what we do here at Universal Studios. In 2001, our friends at DreamWorks released what would become one of the most popular animated movies of our time, Shrek. <sighs> Let's sit back, relax, and enjoy a journey through the story of Shrek. In a swamp far, far away lived an ogre named Shrek. Shrek loved his quiet home. But suddenly, his once peaceful swamp became overrun with fairy tale creatures. Lord Farquaad forced us to come here, Pinocchio exclaimed. Angered by the disturbance, Shrek set out to find Lord Farquaad. A deal was struck. Shrek would rescue Princess Fiona from a dragon infested castle. And in return, Lord Farquaad would restore his swamp to its once peaceful state. Shrek and his unexpected companion, Donkey, heroically ventured into the castle, hoping to rescue the princess from the highest room of the tallest tower. They had found her. With no time to spare, they were on their way. A distant roar echoed through the castle. You didn't slay the dragon? Fiona exclaimed. Running for their lives, they narrowly avoided the fiery fury of the dragon. They had done it! The princess was safe, and Shrek could deliver on his promise to Lord Farquaad. But as the days passed on the journey back to Duloc, Shrek and Fiona grew close, slowly falling for one another. However, Princess Fiona had a secret, a curse, transforming her into an ogre at night only to be broken by true love's first kiss. Ashamed, Fiona hid, hoping no one would see her. Except one did. Donkey. Fiona made him swear not to tell anyone, not even Shrek. Shrek had made a promise. He had rescued the princess for Lord Farquaad. No matter his feelings, he made a deal, and he would see it through. Shrek and Donkey handed over Fiona and went on their way, the deal was done. With wedding bells ringing, the day had arrived for Lord Farquaad to marry her. But Shrek didn't feel good. He missed Fiona. I object, yelled Shrek, rushing down the aisle, crashing the wedding. As the sun set, Princess Fiona floated up into the air, turning into her ogre form, surprising everyone, and more importantly, Lord Farquaad. Disgusted by her ogre form, Farquaad threatens to lock her away. All his yelling and anger, such a sore on the ears, but nothing a hungry dragon couldn't fix. 
With true love's kiss, the curse was broken, and Fiona remained an ogre. I don't get it. I was meant to be beautiful, she sighed. Shrek gazed into her eyes, a gentle warmth in his voice. But you are beautiful. Returning to Shrek's swamp, they both lived happily ever after. <laughs> I do love a good happy ending. Wasn't that great? I'd highly recommend visiting Shrek Swamp if you haven't already. Well, friends, our tour sadly has to come to an end. From all of us here at Universal Studios, thank you and have a wonderful day. Hello there, my name is Mary and I shall be your guide today through our tour of Universal Studios and our grand history. Of course, I cannot do this job alone, so let me introduce my partner in crime, my other half, and most importantly, our driver, George. Be nice to him, considering our lives are in his hands. Now, just a reminder to stay inside the tram at all times during the tour. That includes your hands, feet, head, tentacles, or any other appendages you might have with you. The last thing we need is for someone to get caught on something or fall out of the car and create a real-world trolley problem. Contrived ethical dilemmas aside, how about we get this show on the road? After you, George! As we go along this tour, you will become familiar with the main features of our lovely park and learn some fun and interesting parts of our history. You never know when that sort of knowledge will come in handy. The first destination on our tour is Timeline Drive. Here you can see posters from some of our greatest hits dating all the way back to our 1931 rendition of Dracula. If you're ever in need of something to watch on a Friday night, maybe give one of these a try. Some of them may be a bit old, but they're still beautiful works of art. Get some friends together and maybe try the original version of The Mummy or Creature of the Black Lagoon. You'll get a kick out of them. The films Universal Studios is better known for in our day and age start in the later half of the 1900s. Many of you have probably heard of the classic thriller Jaws from 1975 or one of my favorites, the 1982 movie E.T. If you didn't know, E.T. stands for extraterrestrial, meaning something that came to us from beyond our planet Earth. Over on our right, these large structures are the studio's production buildings. This is where the magic happens, where everyone comes together to make the movies that we love. It takes a huge number of people to make a film, though, especially today when there are so many special effects. Of course, we need actors, but we also need writers to make the script, directors to make sure that the actors and everyone else make the best artistic choices, and producers to keep everyone on schedule. Of course, none of that would be possible without our carpenters, gaffers, lighting crew, camera people, CGI teams, makeup artists, electricians, pyrotechnicians. Honestly, if you can think of a job, chances are someone with that job has worked on at least one movie with us here. Or at least for a little while. You're now entering the New York section. We're only here for a moment, but you can see the Museum of Antiquities. There, you'll find our Revenge of the Mummy ride, where you can help defeat an ancient evil alongside the brave and dashing Rick O'Connell. Don't worry, we'll be back to see the rest of New York later. Now I welcome you to the Golden Gate City, San Francisco! This hilly town is famous for its tram system and infamous for its earthquakes. Most earthquakes are caused when two tectonic plates grind against each other and suddenly shift. The entire planet is covered in these plates, and the places where they meet are called fault lines. Wouldn't you know it, most of California, San Francisco included, lies on a fault line, so you can expect a lot of earthquakes in this area. Speaking of which, I want to show you a little demonstration on how we make earthquakes in the movies. This set was built in the 1980s with the tracks dug right into the floor. When they were done with that movie, though, the guys in charge thought, hmm, you know, earthquakes are pretty common in movies, so let's just keep this one. Now all they need to do is redecorate the scene whenever they want a different earthquake location. Let's see it in action. Here we go.
local subway station with every take. And look, everything is automated and on track, so the team can be reset and ready to go again within just 50 seconds. We don't actually film in there too often, but it seems some use and makes for a fun demo like that. Anyhow, welcome back to the Big Apple. This grand old town has history and culture everywhere, provided you can overlook the Yorkshire Terrier-sized rats and is a massive hub of the arts. The famous street Broadway is home to some of the best and most popular theater performances in the world, but you can find beautiful, rich work all over town. The city is like an incubator for the arts, some place where some of our country's greatest works are born, including a bunch of movies. Not everything is filmed in California after all. Passing on our left, we see the building where the ride based on Steven Spielberg's famous film E.T. runs. If you haven't yet, you should give it a whirl. Now that's something to phone home about. Now this is what we call Hollywoodland. And up here is our Monster Cafe, where you can see all of the classic monsters from our films, like Frankenstein's Monster, Dracula, the Wolfman, and the creature from the Black Lagoon. And don't worry, they don't bite. Much. We are passing by the now-completed Universal Globe. Woody Woodpecker mentioned that it's thanks to you that the missing letters are back where they belong. The spinning globe is one of the most iconic parts of any Universal Park. And now, it's back. Something smells swampy. I heard a green ochre lives over there. Let's all just take a moment to appreciate the beautiful sounds of nature. Of course, that's all just part of the movie magic. From here, though, we'll be taking a turn into the darker side of the park. We now enter the realm of the Lord of the Jungle. Join me as we pay tribute to... Kong! 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 Everyone! Kong! 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 Really? No one? I'm just... Okay, well, let's hope he isn't insulted by your lack of reverence. Otherwise, he might throw this tram all the way to New York. And I don't mean the movies that we just drove through on the way here. By the way, if you haven't yet and are feeling particularly brave, I highly recommend stopping by the ride we have here, Reign of Kong. You can join Kate and her expedition team as they delve into the caverns and other lost places to uncover the secrets of Skull Island. This is what we call Old Mexico, and it's just the kind of place we'd take a camera crew if they were looking to film something set out in the Old Wild West. Now this area has something of a weird localized weather system, so I apologize for the rain as we... Hey, uh, George, why'd you stop the tram? You can't go and get right. No, I'm not asking the passengers to get out and pull it. Not in the rain. That's just... Somewhere. Well, this is 
just a reminder, folks, to please keep your hands and feet inside the vehicle oh. at all times. Whew. Don't worry, everything is fine. Seems we got a little too close for that ankylosaurus comfort. Several of our monster movies were made here, at least in part. 
part. Over there, you can actually see a set of double doors that were used in... What's that sound?